Recently, a Seattle icon passed away. Not too many people would recognize who he is, though, because uh, a lot of folks, uh, they, uh, just, no, they just don't know who he is. They uh, are not from Seattle. They've only been there a little while. And this person has been past his prime. But for those of you that remember who this guy is, I'm going to tell you. Frosty Fowler. Frosty Fowler, late local DJ, stayed cool during immense pressure when he did his local radio show. I'm reading an article from a, a, a newspaper blog, sort of. The headline screamed, Frosty Fowler, late local DJ, stayed cool while Space Needle shook. Frosty Fowler, broadcast from Radio King. Frosty Fowler, broadcaster for Radio King from a studio atop the Space Needle. And he was on the air during the great April 29th, 1965 earthquake that happened in Seattle. Y'all have had a few. Harold Lewis, his given name, Frosty Fowler. Harold Lewis Frosty Fowler. Couldn't remember exactly which Connie Francis song was playing on the Radio King turntable a few minutes before 8.30 a.m. on Thursday April 29, 1965. It might have been Forgotten Domina, Doma, Domini, Forgotten Domini, or it could have been for Mama, but it probably wasn't wishing it was you. Fowler, who passed away last week at his Paul's Bow home at age 96, can be forgiven for not remembering the tune from that long ago morning and there are no recordings of his broadcast to be able to check. Frosty Fowler, Frosty was an army nickname of forgotten origins, had other things on his mind as he sat in his broadcasting booth on the observation deck of the Space Needle on that April day. I think it happened about 8.29 in the morning, Fowler said in an interview back in 2016, and it was very frightening. Uh, yeah, I could feel and I could see the people responding on the needle. What Fowler could feel and what those people were responding to was a 6.7 magnitude earthquake that put the 605 foot landmark from the 1962 World's Fair, Seattle's World's Fair, into serious if not actually dangerous motion. Oh, man, if I was up there, I would be getting seasick like a mother. They hire a lot of young people to work in the kitchens and the elevators, and the Space Needle visitors are starting to run, Fowler said, and they didn't know where they were running or what they were doing. Well, Fowler admitted, I was apprehensive myself. Frosty Fowler, of course had a long career in broadcasting in the Northwest. In the late 50s and early 60s, he was the morning man for Radio King in the days when the station at 1090 on the AM dial played what was called middle of the road or M-O-R format. Middle of the road format. This meant earnest, button-down personalities like Frosty Fowler and Jim French and mellow music from artists like Connie Francis and Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, man. Ring-a-ding, dang, ring-a-ding, dang. Plus news, weather, and interviews with interesting people. Fowler inaugurated the station's daily 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. space needle broadcast in July of 63 and worked the morning shift there until early May of 90, uh, 1966. That was the year I was born. It was a solo operation for Frosty Fowler. 
he worked alone in the Space Needle with all the other radio station functions happening at the King Broadcasting Building on Dexter Avenue, a few blocks from Denny Way. When he recalled the 1965 quake during an interview three years ago, time had somewhat dimmed Frosty Fowler's memory of the specific details, but Fowler's recollections of the feeling from that shaky morning hadn't dimmed a bit. He could still feel it, shaking under his boots, swaying back and forth, man. You're more of a man than I would have been, Frosty. As that Connie Francis record, whatever it was, spun, Fowler collected himself and then went about his serious responsibilities as a broadcaster. I talked about the earthquake on air. I got calls. People on the observation level would stop and look in the Space Needle broadcast booth window and look at me as I was broadcasting and then they would run away. News reports at the time didn't mention a panic atop the Space uh, Needle during or after the quake, but Frosty Fowler remembered that people were certainly eager to get back down to ground level. I don't blame you. There were as many as 200 people on hand for a weekly King TV broadcast of the local morning program Telescope, which happened to only broadcast from the Space Needle on Thursdays, which April 29, 1965 happened to be. There were, they were trying to get on the elevator and the elevators were full, Fowler said recalling that the structure continued to sway for at least a few more minutes after the quake stopped. People were wanting to get off the Space Needle, but I stayed the whole time. That's Frosty Fowler for you, man. They don't make them like that anymore. Frosty Fowler had a radio show to do, and he understood what his job was. I reported on traffic, I reported on things that I saw and things maybe that I didn't see but I felt, Fowler said, basically, because basically I wondered, is the Space Needle going to survive? And it did. It survived. It's standing tall, looking out over Seattle, guarding her, keeping her safe. Fowler, who graduated from what's now known as what's now Washington State University, worked in radio in Yakima and Spokane before getting a job at Radio King in the late 50s. It's clear he loved broadcasting from the Space Needle. Who wouldn't? Man, that view is just dynamite out of this world spectacular. As long as the transplants don't screw up the skyline and make it unrecognizable. It's clear he loved broadcasting from the Space Needle and loved doing daredevil stunts like climbing the tower atop the needle where a gas flame burned during the World's Fair or riding up the side of the structure in a window washer rig. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that. It's become a place of importance as a symbol of the city and a major attraction for locals and for tourists, Fowler noted, and also the weather. It was very obvious to see what was coming, Fowler said, and I could see in the distance all the way down to Shelton and Olympia, and I could see tugboats and freighters coming in and passenger ships. I can see it all from the top of the needle, and that, my friends, it's why people pay big dollars to have dinner at the top of the needle. The most beautiful building ever created, in my opinion. It's rugged, and it's manly, and it's sleek, and aerodynamic, and it's sexy, just like the legs of a woman. The perspective offered by the height and the wonder the, pers the pers perspective offered by the height and the wonder and those feelings caused by the quake made a deep and lasting impression on Fowler as he surveyed the city and beyond 
from his unique radio studio that memorable morning. He said, the whole experience shook you right down to the core. I didn't feel the earthquake was going to destroy the Space Needle, but we all had a little Space Needle in us. What I mean is, we have stability, and Seattle had stability. And we have a feeling Seattle was very emotional and cared about itself a lot. Whether it's a car wreck or illness or whatever it is, it shakes us up. It was a while before I stabilized, he added. Back down on ground level, the, 29, the April 29, 1965 quake only lasted about 20 seconds, but it was blamed for several deaths. Three people who died from falling debris and four who died from heart attacks. Sad, man. A gorgeous city like Seattle and Mother Nature goes and kills a few people. Radio King remained in the Space Needle broadcast studio until May of 66. After that, R-I-K-I-R-K-I-R-O -I Radio moved in and remained there until 74. Finally, K-A-Y-O did a six-month stint with DJ Bobby Wooten, actually living in an apartment adjacent to the broadcasting booth. Yep, I'm going to have to look him up too. DJ Bobby Wooten. They don't make names like that. They don't name people like that anymore. Frosty Fowler, Bobby Wooten. I mean, those names are like, they mean something. When you hear them, you just know they mean something. You know the person is going to be fun to be around, but he's like, important. Frosty Fowler wasn't the only local broadcaster to famously get caught on the air during an earthquake. Dave Nehas was broadcasting on KIRO 710 AM and Mariners affiliate around the Northwest when the Mariners were playing the Cleveland Indians in the Kingdom May 2, 1996, when a 5.3 magnitude earthquake struck near Duval. The kingdom shook and the game was suspended in the bottom of the seventh inning. With Cleveland up 6-3, to three, the game was finished the next afternoon with the Mariners losing 6-4. to four. Ugh. But I bet it was a good game though. Seattle's had a lot of earthquakes happen from time to time. Big ones, small ones. But... Frosty Fowler, wherever you're at, my hat is off to you. Thank you for all the beautiful memories that you've given Seattle. And for anybody that's interested, look him up. You might like what you see. This has been All Things Considered, because I consider all things, hoping that you'll leave a comment and hit the subscribe button. Have a good night.